So today we're going to be taking a look at the subreddit motorcycles. Let's get right to it. So this is an insurance quote for a BMW 2021 BMW S1000RR. Hi Anthony, for full coverage, 1 million liability, 500 deductible collision comprehensive coverages, it'd be approximately $21,000 per, or $22,000 per year, $1,822 per month. To reduce the premium, you can insure a car that it will be $17,500 a year. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I've always wanted a BMW S1000 double R. Maybe not anymore. Okay, red light. Yeah, it's gonna get us. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? That is crazy. I bet the cops probably thought that he was with that other group, maybe. Are you kidding me? Jesus Christ, these police officers got to get a grip, man. So I screwed up by leaving my bike running overnight. What do I need to look out for? So as the title suggests, I recently screwed up by leaving my bike outside running overnight because I got home and went straight in onto errands and completely forgot to put the bike away. Honestly, I'm lucky I still have it, let alone it's still running. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't get stolen, to be honest. I thought I'd got unlucky and had just drained the battery as when I turned it off in the morning and couldn't start it back up, all I had to do was bump start it and it was back on the road. However, I noticed that I'd lost a little bit of power, so I don't accelerate as quick. I'm affected a bit more by the wind and I lose speed a bit more on the hills. It's only a, a Y, uh, a, yeah, I imagine that's a Yamaha. It's only a YS125 from 2017, so I didn't exactly have a massive amount of speed or power to begin with. I will top out at 60, 65 mile an hour on a dual carriageway in good condition. So I was wondering what I need to look out for. Is it worth taking it to a garage to have it looked at? Thanks, and please don't roast me too hard for this. I am a twit. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that bike is probably air-cooled. YS125, let's have a look. Yeah, this is an air-cooled bike. Uh, I suppose the biggest problem that you've got is it probably overheating because it relies on the wind as you're moving to cool it, cool it down. And if it doesn't have that, then yeah, it might overheat. I would probably guess, if it was me, I'd guess that probably a head gasket might be blown. I don't know. I don't know, that's, that's a tough one. Somehow, it's probably lo losing compression somehow. And that's probably where you're losing a little bit of power. Because as engines age, they lose their compression. And that's probably probably what's causing the dip in power it's difficult to tell sometimes with 125s because they like the guy says they don't exactly have a lot of power to begin with so hmm interesting let's have a look at some of the uh, comments here yeah if it's air cooled you've cooked it a bit change the oil asap it's probably viscous as piss now <laughs> all right change, change the oil tomorrow good oh it's only 10 hours ago nine hours ago this one if it's air cooled which i believe the ys125 is you've likely damaged the cylinder head or both it's still incredible it's running yeah i mean i suppose that's the main thing isn't it that it's actually running now this actually sounds really bad but i would be tempted to sell this bike because the new owner isn't going to know it's down on power I know that is really cruel and really mean, but that is buying and selling motorcycles, right? It's up to the person buying the bike to know what they're buying. If you're selling it and it's still running, I'd be tempted to sell it and get another one personally if it were me, if it were my bike and I did this. But if it was liquid cooled, it would probably be all right. I mean, having an engine idle running for ages isn't great anyway. Because even with a radiator, you still need air going through the radiator. And even though a lot of motorcycles that are liquid-cooled have fans that turn on and off whenever it needs to cool down the, 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 the coolant, the YF125 actually doesn't have a fan on it. So it's still relying on that air flowing through the radiator to cool, to cool the coolant down. Yeah, not good. So this person says, what I want to know is why you didn't hit the kill switch and turn the key off before getting off the bike. 
I personally, I don't use the kill switch to turn the bike off. I just use the ignition. They do exactly the same thing, pretty much. That's just the habit that I've got into, turning off the ignition. But, see, the thing is for me is I've got into a habit of locking the steering of my bike or my bikes, all of them. So whenever I park up, I always have to turn the bike off in order to lock the steering. Because, I mean, if you're not locking your steering or you own a motorcycle, you probably should. That is the first thing you should do anytime whenever you turn your, well, whenever you park up your bike, is lock the steering every time. Yeah, Yamahas, man, they're reliable. What can I say? And that is, this is a 125cc engine, arguably one of the most unreliable motorcycle engines you can actually buy. Because I don't think it's a secret. I mean, motorcycles, they cost a lot to make. And 125cc bikes obviously are built to be cheaper. So everything that's in them is cheaper. The engines are made to be cheaper. Everything's cheaper. So it's not really expected to last as long as like a 1000. You know, they are built much better, much bigger, with much better components, much more hard wearing, you know. It's interesting. So some people say, I think it might just be in your head, idling an engine all, running all night should not cause damage. Maybe not. Maybe not. It might be absolutely fine. Who knows? Very interesting. Yeah, if it were me and you know for a fact it's down on power, just get rid of it. There's, there's no point. Get rid of it as soon as possible. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's rough, man. Ugh. Yeah, probably let that clutch out a little bit too much. See, most bikes, most bikes, if, in fact, probably all bikes wouldn't do that unless you had a lot of throttle as well. But that clutch bit really hard and he had quite a lot of gas probably. I don't know. How much does it take to wheelie in first gear a motorcycle? Probably like 6,000 RPM, something like that. Especially something that it looks like maybe, maybe could be... A mid-weight bike, I don't know. don't know what bike it is exactly, but... Yeah, I'm going to guess a mid-weight. It could be up to a 1,000cc, but yeah. Really easy to do that if you're not careful. That's why you, you let the clutch out nice and gently, nice and slowly. And then if you are trying to get off the line quicker, then at least you are expecting somewhat the front wheel to come off the ground. But it might be a case of having to adjust that suspension as well. Make it a little bit softer on the rear. Absorb some of that torque. Yeah, might help. Yamaha R6 was 62,000 miles. Now that is a nice bike, isn't it? Yeah, that is in lovely condition. It just goes to show that not all high mileage bikes are bad. It's like high mileage cars. Not all high mileage cars are bad. They're only bad if they haven't been looked after. You could get a car that runs four or 500,000 miles if it's been looked after, if it's had the oil changes done every six months to a year, something like that. Same with bikes, you do the oil changes every six months to a year, four or 5,000 miles or so, you, you really shouldn't have any problems, at least with the engine itself. You might get some other wear and tear components, the, the fork seals will probably go, the chain, you'll probably have to replace the chain, something like that at this mileage, maybe even the rear shock. It really depends on what the bike's been used for and how it's been treated elsewhere but for the most part yeah you change that or you change that filter every year there's no reason why any r6 can't reach 62,000 miles and beyond i suppose it's almost the end of riding season here in ontario jesus christ man that is brave that is so brave i mean I'm struggling right now. We've got a video that's meant to come out. It's meant to come out this uh, this next coming week, but it hasn't been cold enough. And basically, we've bought some heated gloves. We bought an expensive pair or a middle range pair, I imagine, and a cheap pair. And we're just going to compare the two. But it's actually getting up to 10 degrees now, and we're in December, and we have been getting zero degrees the past few weeks around this part of the country. So really annoying. But that that is bad enough for me. Right, between zero and five degrees, that is absolutely horrendous. I can only imagine what that is like. That's a brave guy. Oof, fair play. But I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing that. Yeah, Canada, this this time of year. You've got to be looking at minus ten degrees, maybe. Maybe even less than that. Jesus. My first Harley, two thousand three Road King anniversary. Couldn't be happier. That's a nice bike, man. That's a nice machine. The only thing that I struggle with with Harleys is it's just the, the engine designs, because aren't they push rod engines, a lot of them? 
maybe all of them are push rod engines so the engines are bigger for basically no reason you could easily get probably a v twin or a v4 that is cam driven and it would be absolutely fine rather than push rod driven so i think it's I don't know, maybe push rod engines are more reliable. Let me know down in the comments, I'm not sure. Honda Goldwing Dream Bike, really? I don't know, for me, I think I get bored of it really quick, to be honest with you. And that's the same with a lot of touring bikes for me. I think I get bored of them really quickly. I don't know, like, they're nice looking and I'm sure they've got a lot of, lot of features for pillion riding and all that. I bet it's wonderful, but I don't like pillion riding. That's one of my pet peeves for me about motorcycling. I don't like... I don't like it. I don't know. I've had I've had Taurus before. I've had Sport Taurus before, but uh, a Goldwing is not a motorcycle I would ever own personally. <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh my God! You. F it just went from bad to worse, there, didn't it? I mean, I think I think that motorcyclist was probably filtering, which is why that happened. But well, that other motorcyclist was filtering as well. But you don't expect people to just stop in the middle of a highway and open their door. That oh dearie me! Someone that clearly doesn't check their mirrors. That's that's who this guy is. His insurance company must be so pissed off with him. Jesus, he can't. He probably can't get insured anymore. <laughs> Two claims at exactly the same time, that's bad. Not to mention almost killing two people. Or because he wanted to get into that lane, man, for no reason. When you're on a highway it's v and, and it's gridlock traffic in a single lane, it's really difficult to move out of it. You've got to be so careful. <laughs> found my found Christmas presents at my wife in the basement. Any guess is what they could be. <laughs> yeah, hmm. I don't know, maybe the... Really big cock rings. <laughs> I guess he's quite well endowed. Who knows? Guy I like offered to give me a ride on his motorcycle. Is he flirting? I've been pretty into this guy from the place I go to often. He works there. I don't. We talk a lot. We ask a lot of questions about each other. We're into the same things, etc. A week ago, we were talking about his motorcycle, and I've said I've never ridden on one. Then he told me if I ever wanted to have a go, he would give me a ride. I said I'd be super down. Later on, when I was leaving, he made sure to mention it again. Do guys normally ask girls they're interested in to ride with them, especially because of their closeness? Or is he just being nice? Thanks. That's a tough one. Me personally, if I was doing that, it's not necessarily because I'd be into you, if I'm being perfectly honest. Because the thing is, right, bikers as people, they want to share the experience with anyone with as many people as they can. They just want to share it. So I don't necessarily think he's hitting on you or is maybe he's not interested in that way. Maybe he just wants to share this experience with you. However, because, because it's, it's just a place that you meet often and you talk a lot, I don't know, that's pretty tough. I say if you did actually work together, maybe that's why he says that he doesn't work there. Maybe if you did work together, then it would mean more of a I am inviting you because I want to share this experience with you not because I'm trying to hit on you but yeah yeah he, he could be I mean I suppose the only way to find out is to ask the question is simply say look you know we've been talking a lot and you know are we are we thinking the same thing here you know and kind of ask him I, th I think I think sometimes you got to be straight with people really no one likes beating around the bush do they What's wrong with my fuel pump? For reference, I bought a 1997 Suzuki RF900R. I've been trying to fix it up. I cleaned the old fuel out, cleaned the calves, and replaced the fuel pump. And it seems as though the new one is a bit, a bit messed up too. I see that it's running and kind of pulling fuel into, into it, but it isn't pushing it to the carbs. Any ideas on how to troubleshoot this issue? So it's clean out the old fuel, clean the carbs, and replace the fuel pump. So... It's probably going to be one of two things, in my opinion. It will be a clogged up fuel line going to the carbs or inside the carbs themselves. I think they have like a jet and the jet might be clogged up because unfortunately with carbureted motorcycles, if you ever try running them with old fuel, it will probably clog up the carburetors. So you probably need them 
to be rebuilt. You need to take them apart. You'll have to clean all the all the little jets, the yeah, all the little pipes basically that spray the fuel up to mix it with the air. You probably need to clean that. Okay, so it's a bit like a sporty Tora. So I imagine that's a four cylinder. So yeah, that's that's that'll be my guess. That's the first thing that I would do is have a look at rebuild getting the carbs rebuilt. Carburetors are quite simple things, but even I wouldn't feel that comfortable rebuilding them personally. By all means, take them off, take them to a mechanic so you save at least a little bit on labor costs and they can just rebuild them for you there and then. They'll clean them all up. They will make sure that all of the little spouts inside the carburetors are nice and clean and you know there's no debris in them and things like that. But that's that's well, that's my guess. Might be a case as well of having a look at the electrics, make sure that it's not shorting out anywhere, and the cables are actually, you know, nice and clean, and they're not broken or braid, um, you know, like split or anything like that. Yeah, th those are things that I would do, but that, but look, I'm not a mechanic, all right. That's just my best guess. In question is a 2016 Yamaha FZ6R. I've offered him 3K and he counted with 3.5K. I said I'll, I'll think about it until Friday, tomorrow. Uh, below is our entire exchange. Okay, so look here. The only thing I know of the bike that needs a quick alignment when I got it back, it pulled to the right, but it's a quick, cheap fix. Mm, I'm not sure if that is a quick, cheap fix, to be honest with you. Sounds like the bike might have been run over. I mean, it might just be a case of, yeah, just lining up the the rear wheel on the swing arm, maybe. Back from dealership. Is it in? Is it drivable in its current condition? Have another time to run it back to, back to the shop. I used to have it done. I don't know. Yeah, I drive it every now every now and then. Jesus Christ, man! Just get your English right, would you? What would you say something like that costs? Alignment ain't much as it's a quick fix. I can call and ask a dealership if they can fix it since they are the ones that mess up the alignment anyway. When they put in the new, ign new ignition switch in? Why the hell would they be messing around with the wheel alignment putting in an, an ignition switch? But I I'd walk away from this because that sounds to me like the bike's been stolen. You know what I mean? A new ignition switch. That sounds like, sound like it's been stolen, maybe recovered, and then they've put in a new ignition switch. I don't know. I doubt that a 2016 Yamaha motorcycle would have a failure on an ignition switch. If anything, it's going to be a fuse or something like that. It wouldn't be the ignition switch itself. Cool, cool. So it just pulls to the right a little, like it's a wobble in a car. Would align when when it, <laughs> if it needed an alignment. No, it just pulls to the right kind of hard to turn at slow speeds, but nothing unmanageable. Dude, you got two wheels, man. Just no, it, it's not safe. If you want, I can wait and have some time next week or two to have the shop look at it. It wasn't like that before I took it in. So I think they need to balance and align the tires properly. But again, if they didn't do any other work apart from changing the ignition switch, why would it be Why would it be doing that? I, I seriously don't think that if a, the wheel balance is going to impact the direction of the bike... I don't know. You have to let me know that down in the comments section. But because the wheel is going up and down like this, so in my in my mind, if a wheel isn't balanced properly and it's turning around, it's the centrif centrifugal forces that are going to lift the bike up and down. They're not going to impact it from side to side, I suppose, unless you're leaning into a corner, maybe. But I don't think that it's going to be wheel balanced personally. Honestly, I'm looking to buy it as soon as possible. If you want, I can. Um, we'll still call a f friendly power sports in blah. And see if they'll fix it for free regardless. Yeah, you can do that if you don't mind. I just want to make sure the alignment isn't isn't more of a serious issue. No, I think it was an oversight when they finished working on it, I assume. It wasn't like that when, when I brought it to them. So I assume it's since I had a new chain on it. Okay, second owner, 2016 Yamaha FZ6R. Okay, lost original key. I wouldn't touch this bike. If it's been looked after properly, it shouldn't have any problems with wheel alignment there's a 2016 motorcycle with three and a half thousand miles on it it wouldn't need why the hell would it need a new chain really so you try to tell me even if you don't lube or clean your chains whatsoever do you really think that a chain wouldn't last longer than four thousand miles nah mate i'd walk away from that not a chance not a chance in hell 
Sorry, mate, I'd look elsewhere. You've got to make sure when you're buying a motorcycle, the first thing you've got to make sure is that the bike can actually be ridden home. It turns the whole experience of riding your brand new motorcycle, that really exciting experience, into something that just becomes an absolute nightmare. Nope. No, 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 no. No way. No way. Trust me. Trust me. No way. Even if it's the last FZ6 in your area, don't touch it. Go a little bit further out. You, I'm sure you could get for three, well, three, three thousand dollars. I'm pretty sure you could get an FZ6R, similar age, similar mileage. That isn't in this condition. Sounds to me like it's been in a crash or it's been stolen. Yeah, no, you, you're being fleeced, mate. You're being scammed. It's a scam. Yeah. No, no, thank you. All right, would I buy this? Let's have a look. Red line once. Red line twice. No, I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, if the, uh, I imagine that's the owner of the bike that's trying to sell it, that's trying to sell the bike. If you are doing that to try and advertise the bike, that's the wrong way you go about it. Why is it that so many people don't understand that the more you redline an engine, the more load you put on the engine, the more it wears out? Simple as that. There is no getting around it. The more you load an engine, the more it's going to wear out. But motorcycle engines are quite resilient. They are designed to work between 6 and 12,000, 15,000, 18,000 RPM, whatever the model might be. They're designed to work within those limits. But that's why they have the rev limiters in there, to stop them from blowing themselves up, basically. But it doesn't matter. It's okay every now and then. You redline a motorcycle every now and then. It's not a problem. But if you're doing it every time, that engine ain't going to last. It doesn't matter what brand it is. If it's Suzuki, Honda, Yamaha, doesn't matter what it is. It ain't going to last. And he's doing, right, he's doing this to sell the bike. So if he's doing that to sell the bike, you can only imagine how he treated the bike actually just riding it about. No, I wouldn't touch it. Sorry. Wouldn't touch it. Look look for another SV650 elsewhere. There'll be, some, there'll be some people out there that will say, oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. Oh, okay, they're a new rider. I'm a new rider, just got my license today. Very excited to get a bike. I've been looking at deals of the month, waiting to take my MSF. And this bike I am interested in is 2002 SV650 with 11k miles. Probably needs new chain and sprockets, even oil. And even although they said they changed it recently... Attaches video and images, listed at two and a half thousand pounds. He said he won't go any less. Look at these, some of these comments. The owner just pins a throttle to show you how it runs. I wouldn't touch it. Yeah, no. Just on the fact that he's redlining it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Not a chance. Anyway, everyone, thank you for joining me on today's little Reddit journey. We're going to do some more of these in the future. If you like them, let me know what you think down in the comment section below, as always. And, of course, these posts are recent, all right? These are three, four, five, ten hours ago. So any information that you could put down in the comment section for these people, I'm sure would be much appreciated. I might actually put in, like, a little link to this video on this on this subreddit so people know kind of our feelings our little community's feelings on what we've seen today so definitely let us know down in the comment section where you think as always leave a like get subscribed we are close to 10k subscribers i mean i'm filming this on the 8th of december i don't think we're going to reach 10k by the end of the year unfortunately but let's see if we can hit 9k we've got about 500 more to go let's see if we can make that happen i really appreciate it if you could most of our viewers are not subscribers all right if you enjoy the content if the content helps you out get subscribed hit like it's totally free for you but it really helps us out a lot all right so i really appreciate it if you could do that thank you ever so much again take care ride safe and we will catch you all in the next video have a good one